starts with Decision 2024. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Decision 2024 coverage on all of our digital platforms for WIS-TV. I'm Judy Gatson, along with my co-anchor, Greg Adeline. And Greg, t about two hours, a little less than two hours now, that people have to cast their ballots in the South Carolina Republican presidential primary. Of course, the candidates here, former Governor Nikki Haley, squaring off against former President Donald Trump, squaring off over 50 delegates that are at stake right now, and the polls should close, as you mentioned, in just about two hours from now. So far today on Election Day, we've heard reports of some relatively long lines at some of the polling places throughout the Midlands. Uh, and so what will be the turnout, I think, is the question, especially as we work into the evening hours and these final hours of voting. What does the turnout look like and who showed up in this primary uh, that is very closely watched as we continue to work through the evening? Absolutely. We've got live team coverage tonight, the Trump campaign, the Haley campaign, voter turnout. We've got every angle covered, including our political analysts in studio. We want to start with our Mary Green, who is covering the Trump campaign tonight. Mary, I know that you have been in touch with the lieutenant governor's office. She's been out campaigning for the former president, and you're expecting to be able to talk with her this evening. Yes, Judy, Greg, and we are actually here with South Carolina New Lieutenant Governor Pamela Evett, who has been with the Trump campaign from the start when he had his big kickoff event at the State House a little about a year ago here. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, thank you so much for being here tonight, for joining us. Just want to get your sense of how are you feeling heading into tonight's results? Well, I'm feeling very positive. You know, I've been, David and I voted this morning, big turnouts uh, at our uh, precinct. Uh, went, took my mom on Thursday, long lines up in Traveler's Rest for early voting. So I think that is going to be really positive for President Trump. So I'm expecting that we're going to be very happy here tonight. You got any predictions, any numbers you want to throw out? You know, I, I don't know. I think it's going to be a pretty big win. You know, as I traveled around the state, even when I was in New Hampshire and other places, People are really concerned about what's happening in their homes. That's their main concern. They're worried about safety. We have an open border. I mean, 11 million illegal immigrants in our country, that's double the population of South Carolina. The fact that people are now choosing what they're buying at the grocery store or putting gas in their car, these are things that have the, you know, the people worried. And President Trump, we know. We know what he could do. He's been there before, and people want to get back to that sense of normal, where they feel like they can save, they can save a dollar once again. Well, going off that, we've seen from the start, former President Trump has had a really big backing among South Carolina's political leaders. You, Governor McMaster, Senator Scott, and Senator Graham. I think it's seven of the state's nine members of the congressional delegation. But you all, I mean, you have known former Governor Haley for a long time. You all have worked with her. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that so many political leaders here have decided we're going to go with President Trump? You know, I can only really speak for myself, and long before I was lieutenant governor, I was, uh, I was a Trump supporter. 2015 is when I started supporting him. Then I was in business growing my company, and, and he was a businessman. And, and then he came on the scene, and he did great things. 401ks were going out the roof. Gas prices went down. People were prospering. All different, you know, all different demographics demographics of people were prospering and so that's exactly why I'm continuing to support them. I think that's why everybody is. We're living in times where I know as a mom I feel that my children are less safe today than they were four years ago and that says a lot. I think that's why you're seeing so many people come in and go I want to go back to that time back when I felt like my children were safe and we need to close our border down. I think just want to get your thoughts, of course, that there are these mounting legal challenges that the former President Trump faces. The state and federal indictments I think it's about 90-some criminal charges. I talked with a few supporters yesterday before the rally in Rock Hill. They told me they're not concerned about this. They don't think it's going to really pose a threat to his campaign. What about you? Are you concerned that this could threaten to derail his campaign going forward? No. Uh, you know, I think maybe anybody else uh, I might have been nervous about, but President Trump as steadfast and resolved. Uh, I like him feel this is political persecution and it's, it's plain and simple, you know, in New York where he's, you know, he has mounted this huge legal challenge and got hit with these big fines. Can you imagine there is not a victim in New York? There is not one bank. There's not one person claiming to be a victim. And yet he's fined three hundred and fifty five million dollars with interest. I think it's over four hundred million dollars. I'm, it's unprecedented. And as a business owner myself, every business owner should be horrified 
that if you step out and, and you're a Republican and there's a different administration in play, that they'll weaponize the justice system against you. And I think that's the other thing that's bringing people in into the family, I guess, is they're saying, listen, this is wrong is always wrong and right is always right. And this is wrong, what they're doing to him. And I think that is helping mount a lot of support across the country for him. Last thing on a lighter note, I know you have been busy traveling the campaign trail here in South Carolina. You're up in New Hampshire with the former president. You're going to be here tonight. What are your plans for tomorrow? So tomorrow, uh, I'm going to take a I'm going to take a breath, right, and and just bask in the fact that you know we're moving this forward. I hope tomorrow that we come together as a party, and we all stand behind our nominee. South Carolina is the road to the White House. It's always been, and so with a win here tonight, I just hope that everybody comes together. We stand behind Donald Trump, and we take the White House back because that's what we need to do to make our country safe again. Okay, well, I'm going to add one more question because you made me think about it. Sure. But if you know the polls are a good indication of tonight's results, yeah. do you think former Governor Haley should drop out? Is that what's best for the Republican Party going forward? I think that's best for the Republican Party is that we all come together and we stop wasting donor money and we get behind who the nominee is going to be. And we all come together because this is bigger than any one of us, you know, any one of us who's watching who we like. It's about bringing, uh, it's about taking the White House back. It's about making sure we take the Senate and we get more people in the House. Because it's going to take us all working together to change the course of what's been happening over the last three years. Again, Bidenomics has been a failure. And it's affecting South Carolina. It's affecting our businesses. I mean, I travel around the state all the time, talking with our businesses. And, you know, I've heard firsthand, you know, people's orders are dropping because interest rates are so high. Companies across the country, across the globe, not putting in a lot of orders where they're making capital investments. And just look at the person, the normal person that wants to buy a house for the first time. Four years ago, I read a great article that said you had to earn around $70,000 a year to feel confident to buy that first home. This year, they're saying you have to earn about $140,000 a year. That's double the price in three years of what you have to earn to get the American dream within your reach. So. I'm hoping that we see a big win tonight and then the whole party comes together to support our nominee. Lieutenant Governor Evett, thank you so much for joining us tonight with uh, your busy schedule you have going forward. Judy, Greg, back to you.